Hey guys, in today's video, I want to show you something weird about the racket specs that you will find on the Tennis Warehouse website. And let's get right into it. First, I'm going to show you the racket specs on the manufacturer's website. Now let's get started with Dunlop. So here we have the FX500 Tour and we're going to go down and look at the specs. And here we're going to take a look at the unstrung weight, which is 305 grams. I'm also looking at the unstrung balance and I'm having a hard time finding strong weight or strong balance. Now let's go on to head and we're gonna click on rackets and we're gonna just take a random racket here, the head gravity, and we're gonna take a look at the specs and see what we find here. So interestingly, the weight is only listed as unstrung at 315 grams. Let's go on to the next manufacturer. Let's try Babolat. And here we're gonna take a random racket, which is the Pure Strike 103 unstrung. We're gonna go down and look at the specs. And again, we're looking at the weight unstrung at 285 grams and the balance, which is unstrung at minus seven points head light. All right, let's go on to Yonex. And we're gonna take a random racket here, a Yonex Percept 97D, and we're going to take a look at the specs. And here, the weight is listed as 320 grams, and it doesn't even say whether it's strung or unstrung. So let's do something interesting. Let's go over to Tennis Warehouse, and we're going to try to find the Yonex Percept 97D, and we're going to take a look at the specs, and let's see what we find here. Wow. Okay. So here is the weight on the Tennis Warehouse website that's only listed as the strong weight and it's at 337 grams. The balance is, I'm assuming, also strong at seven points head light. And I'm having a hard time finding the unstrung weight. So guys, it turns out that Tennis Warehouse only lists strong weight. Now in the history of tennis rackets, manufacturers have always used the unstrung weight. Now why would that be the case? Because that is the most accurate measurement. In fact, that's what's stamped on the racket. If you take a look here at the RF97, you see 340 grams stamped right on the racket. See what happens when you measure the weight of a racket with the strings already in there, it's not going to be 100% accurate. because you don't know what strings are you going to put in the racket. Is it going to be a 1.35 millimeter string? Is it going to be a 1.20 millimeter strings? Those are going to be of a different weight. Also, the shape of the string can also influence the weight of a racket. Okay, it's not going to be that big of a difference. Most players won't be able to feel the difference in weight. It's going to be a couple of grams here and there. But listing the strong weight is highly inaccurate. The most accurate thing that you can do regarding racket weight is list the unstrung weight and the unstrung balance. That's why all the manufacturers except Wilson list the unstrung weight of a racket. Now Wilson does list the strong weight and the unstrung weight. They have really detailed specs. Now I have made a lot of racket equipment videos over the last four to five years. And when I refer to weight of a racket, people often ask me, Nick, are you talking about strong or unstrung weight? And this is Tennis Warehouse's fault. Now, I am absolutely not blaming Tennis Warehouse for obviously omitting the unstrung weight. It wouldn't be much of an effort to put the unstrung weight of a racket in the specs. So they're doing that for a reason. I'm gonna tell you what the reason is. See, a lot of people are of the belief that heavier rackets are better for the arm and that the heavy racket is gonna help their tennis game. And this could not be further from the truth. And let me tell you a story about one of these knuckleheads who thinks that heavy rackets are incredibly good for tennis technique and so on. And the knucklehead I'm talking about is me. So when I was still playing in juniors, I got my hands on a reel of lead tape. And because I've seen a lot of professional players and high level players use lead tape on their racket, I literally covered my entire racket head in lead tape. I put it over here, I put it over here, I put it over here. Now my dad saw this. For any of you that know dads from the Balkan areas, they're not gonna put it nicely when you do something wrong. So he called me out in a pretty bad way 
And from that moment on, I understood that I made a big mistake. Yes, the racket I was using could have used a little bit of lead tape. So my dad had a racket technician that he was using for stringing and so on. And he gave this guy the racket and the guy put 25 grams of lead tape at various spots on the racket, which made the overall weight of the racket somewhere around 330 grams. I'm going to be super honest with you guys and tell you why I put all that lead tape on the racket, because I thought it looked cool. It wasn't so that I could play better. I wanted to look like the pros that I was watching on TV. Because fact is that when you look at racket specs from the pros, for example, if you go on the Tennis Nerd website, it gives you detailed information on what the pros are playing with. And it's true that the best players play with rackets that are very heavy. So a lot of players, of course, want to mimic the pros and they also play with very heavy rackets. Now, on top of that, there's a lot of myths about heavy rackets in general that I've been hearing throughout all these years, for example, that a heavy racket is supposed to be good for the arm because the mass of the racket is going to help you to swing easier. Well, that makes absolutely no sense because I'm going to give you an extreme example. Let's take this racket, which is the RF97, which is 340 grams, unstrung. Now, let's just imagine a 12-year-old and an 80-year-old. Do you think that if I handed this racket to a 12-year-old or an 80-year-old, this would be a good choice? Of course not. These players don't have the athletic capabilities to handle such a racket. Now, of course, this is an extreme example. There are going to be some recreational players who can pull off a heavy racket. There's absolutely no doubt. But the vast majority of recreational players worldwide will benefit from a racket, independent of the brand, that's around 300 grams. Now, when we're talking about the beginner level, I actually recommend that you go down as low as 270 grams. And if you're someone that's not very strong, I'll give you the example of a 12 year old and an 80 year old, you might even want to consider playing with a racket that's below 270 grams, somewhere between 250 and 270. Now, when we're talking about the advanced recreational level, it's very safe to play with rackets anywhere between 300 and 330 grams. And yes, there's going to be a small percentage of players that can play with rackets that are 340 or 350. Now think logically, what percentage of players do you think is at the advanced recreational level? The vast majority of tennis players are below the advanced recreational level. And let me just give you a comparison. A lot of my friends are former division one tennis players or former professional players, and they all play with rackets somewhere between 300 and 330 grams. It's rare that I ever run into anyone that plays a racket that's heavier than 330 grams. And interestingly, as players get older, as their athletic abilities diminish, they have a tendency to go down in weight. This is what I have done. I used to play with a racket that was around 330 grams and currently I'm playing with a racket that's 300. Now let's compare what I just said to the recreational level, to the comment sections and the reviews that you're reading where players are talking about putting 80 grams of lead tape on their rackets. They're talking about playing with rackets that are 400 grams and more. Just going by the statistics alone, you know that the vast majority of players who are writing comments or writing reviews, they're in the intermediate recreational level. And while there are going to be some intermediates who can pull off a heavy racket that's over 300 grams, the vast majority of players at the intermediate level will not benefit from a heavy racket. They're going to benefit from a racket that's lighter, somewhere around 300 grams or below. Now, let me quickly tell you why that is the case. A player that's athletically gifted, who utilizes their whole body to hit the shots, someone that has all the fundamentals regarding tennis technique, they can play with a heavy racket, no doubt about it. But if you take someone that has fundamental flaws in their technique and you give them a heavy racket, it's going to make their technique even worse. In other words, the racket is not going to help them at all. They are going to benefit from a racket that's lighter and more maneuverable. It's going to be much easier for them to learn the proper technique with a lighter racket. But this myth that heavy rackets are good for the intermediate recreational level and that it can even heal tennis elbow because remember who suffers the most from tennis elbow it's not the professional players it's not the high level players it's recreational players especially in the beginner to intermediate level and if you go on the internet if you read comments if you read reviews you're going to hear people say that the heavy racket can help players getting rid of tennis elbow and this could not be further from the truth 
Now, if you want to know in great detail all the factors that can cause tennis elbow, I'm going to link another video that I made in the description. I've said it many times. If you like your equipment, stick with your equipment. And players, even at the intermediate level, are sometimes going to be able to pull off a super heavy racket. This is definitely true. These players are in a minority, but I have seen them. Now, as far as tennis warehouse is concerned, I don't blame them at all. They probably sell more rackets than anybody on the entire planet and they know exactly what they're doing. I think by Tennis Warehouse omitting the unstrung weight, players look at the specs and they see a heavier weight and they're more likely going to buy a racket that's heavier rather than lighter. So it is my theory that that is the reason why Tennis Warehouse omits putting the unstrung weight in their specs. And again, I don't blame them. They're in the business of selling tennis rackets. I love the website Tennis Warehouse. I've used them since they first came on the market. It is absolutely my favorite website and again they're in the business of selling rackets they're not at fault what's at fault here is this horrible myth that's going around that heavy rackets are good for the recreational level they are absolutely not as i was finishing up this video out of curiosity i wanted to check out tennis warehouse europe for you guys that don't know this is a little side tip if you're looking for really stylish tennis clothes there's a much wider selection on tennis warehouse europe and I have used Tennis Warehouse Europe from the United States. It works. You have to pay a little bit more for shipping. But in any case, I stumbled upon something crazy. I checked the racket specs on Tennis Warehouse Europe. And guess what? They are listing the strong and unstrung weight on Tennis Warehouse Europe. And as you learned in today's video, they're not doing that in the United States. Now, interestingly, this myth about heavy rackets being great for the recreational level is something that I've only seen here in the United States and not so much in Europe. So this is a little side note, something really interesting and something to consider when you are selecting the right racket for you. As I said in today's video, most of you guys are gonna benefit from rackets that are lighter.